Hey guys, Final here, and uh, welcome to my thoughts and analysis of the Final Fantasy VII footage that was released at PlayStation Experience on December 5th. Uh, I may be a little tardy to the party, but maybe I can give a different perspective or something that hasn't already been said. Uh, but I've probably watched it a few times now, but just to be sure I'm going to watch it again, so without further ado... I still don't see why we brought a Shinra soldier along. No way he'd throw all that away for us. <sighs> What's his name, anyway? Cloud Strife. And he says it's former soldier. Look, heavy security like this, you want a professional. <laughs> We're paying you more than a few gil. You best be worth it. Look, I don't care about your politics. Us. Not interested. Wins. Get back here! All right, well, um, yeah, so uh, let's just get right into it. So starting off uh, towards the beginning of the video here, uh, you can see the uh, opening for the train. Cloud Strife, and, and he says it's former soldier. Look, heavy security like this, you want a professional. Okay, so there's, uh, there's Biggs and Jesse. Okay, so here's something that I noticed was discussed by multiple people. So they said, I don't know how I like the look of Barrett. Um, well, I think that they did very good, um, considering the fact that all we had to work with before was Marshmallow Man with horse hooves. So, you know, I think they did really well. I think I could see this being Barrett when he was younger before Advent Children, before the dreadlocks and... Uh, obviously the larger gun arm that he gets but as far as the sunglasses and whatnot I also heard people referencing that he looks like Blade just because it, he has a fade and sunglasses he's he's Blade really that's racist anyway moving on you best be worth it look I don't care about your politics okay so I gotta admit like that right there just cloud his model is just perfect. It's literally everything I imagined it when I was a kid playing this game with my best friend. So I think they hit the, uh, the hammer on the nail there. Okay, so something else that I liked that I noticed. Uh, the actual gameplay footage. So you can see he's running around with Buster Sword on his back. You know, uh, in the original, if, you know, for those of you who've played it, you'll know that most of the game you don't see Cloud running around with a sword on his back. It's just you, you know, you kind of randomly pull it out whenever you need it or if you actually enter into a battle sequence. So I really love that. Okay, that's another thing. When he was running around the city and whatnot, 
I imagine it's not going to be 100% free roam, and for anyone who thinks that it's going to be, uh, you're probably going to be disappointed. You know, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be somewhat, I think it's going to be somewhat linear. There'll still be room for exploration and all that, especially, you know, uh, once you move on to bigger and better things. For those of you who haven't played FF7, I don't want to spoil anything, but, you know, let's just say Midgar is the starter area. This for the planet, same as us. Not interested. Okay, so right there, when uh, when Wedge talked, I don't know how I feel about his voice actor. Um, maybe they were going for like a like a fat kid who has like a raspy voice or something. It's the only thing I can think of. It's not bad, but it's just not what I pictured it, I guess. Um, and I know most people. I've seen a lot of uh, outrage from the. FF7 fan community about how oh I, I prefer uh, Japanese voice acting or just no voice acting at all because you know anyone who watches anime okay not everyone but a lot of people who watch anime automatically say that all dubs are bad when that's not generally the case but you know uh, everyone's entitled to their own opinion Wait. Okay, so, uh, hang on, let's go back just a smidgen here. So as you can see, Cloud's beating the shit out of that infantryman. So anyway, um, so right here you can kind of get a feel for what the uh, UI is going to look like, or at least in the early stages. It looks more to be active, uh, active battle and less of uh, turn base. And honestly, I'm completely okay with that. And here's why I say that. I understand that everybody loves the loves turn base, uh, and that's what Final Fantasy at its core is. Um, but I think that it's okay to go in this direction because you can't be afraid of change. And honestly, this could work out really well. Um, I could see this doing great things for the franchise. They can't do turn base forever, guys. Like that's just how I feel about it. Eventually, they're going to have to evolve past it. And honestly, that's why the original FF7 is around. If you really want to play turn-based, go back to that. It's still around. I still got it in my Steam library. And I'm actually planning on doing a playthrough of it uh, not too far off from now. But anyway, so we'll take a look at the UI. Back to here you have attack, magic, summon, items, and defend. Now, I think that's pretty cool how they have it all broken up. Um, you know, it's very much like the original. And for summon, I... I can't even imagine what that's going to look like if it's going to pause the the fight in general and then have the you know the summon come out and just destroy whatever you know whatever your enemy is I have no idea but uh, it should be interesting to see what square does with it okay and then as you can see this is from the point of view of uh, Barrett and you know uh, that makes me believe that character switching will be a thing in the FF7 remake, so I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, so uh, so okay, so you saw you saw Barrett just launch that huge explosion at them. If you'll notice down here, Barrett's uh, bar underneath his name is full red. So. Maybe it's either a damage buff or it's some kind of special attack, but not quite a limit break. So, it's just something to think about. So the uh, the the Robo Scorpion or the Guard Scorpion, beautiful. Like just everything I could have imagined uh, for the graphics that we have today back in you know '97. I think I think it looks really good. And then as far as the uh, well, I can't get a really good still frame of them, but as far as as far as the Avalanche characters in general, 
I think their design is really well thought out, really done. Uh, they've really fleshed out. I don't know what's going on with his mustache and beard there. I guess I just caught it on a weird frame. But anyway, I think it was really well thought out uh, how they fleshed out the characters so far. And to be honest, I cannot wait to see Tifa, if you know what I mean. Okay, this right here actually, I took a I took a screenshot of this. This is actually my desktop background currently. But uh something else that I had heard people talk about is the um is his arms, you know. His arms look way too tiny. Well, if you go back to um the Final Fantasy VII uh, strategy guide or, you know, any image of him from like even the original booklet that came with Final Fantasy VII for PlayStation 1, you can see his arms are pretty small, you know. He wasn't a really jacked guy, and honestly, you can see in Advent Children that he gained more muscle tone, but, you know, that's two years after all the events in Final Fantasy VII, so is it any wonder he's not, you know, a little more uh, muscular. Okay, one more thing before I move on to my next topic. I'll just go back here. Let me get back to the part where. Actually, no, that's. Okay, so th this is a good place. So, so watch Cloud's Buster Sword real quick as he walks by. All right. So right here, you'll notice that it's, uh, you know, below the hilt, down the blade. It's the same exact pattern as, uh, you know, the Crisis Core design of the Buster Sword. But then when you get up here, the uh, the steel rivets, you know, it doesn't have the little wavy patterns and the uh, and the kind of bronzes bronzish gold that the one in Crisis Core did. So that's kind of curious. It's like they took the original Buster Sword design from uh, Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation and they mixed it with Crisis Core. So I thought that was pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think in the uh, in the comment section below about that. Basically, um, what it comes down to for the last thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, the whole thing with Square saying uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake will be uh, released in a multi-series type, uh, type style, type fashion. I don't necessarily know if that means episodic or not you know as soon as they said that square hasn't provided any more information since then and i've been on ign game informer uh kotaku like a bunch of other you know websites that are talking about it and they're all just like well not all of them but a few of them are just like have it have it nailed into the wall that they know for a fact that that means episodes um so here's my thoughts about an episodic final fantasy 7 so as much as it hurts the fans and it kind of hurts me a little bit that we wouldn't have access to the entire game right away, you got to remember, back when Final Fantasy VII came out for the PlayStation, the game was so massive, the file size was so massive for what it was, they had to split it onto three discs. Now I understand that today we have, you know, newer technology, uh, we have Blu-ray disc and things of that nature, you know, stuff that can hold more, more uh, information. Uh, per disc but the amount of information that is required for this remake while staying true to the original FF7 and not cutting anything out as well as adding stuff to the game you know that's that is a shit ton of information so I could almost see why it would be justified to have to release it on separate discs um, now it's either they release part one so we have something to play you know, and we're not waiting until 2020 for them to finish, or they can hold off for many more years until they get all of it done and then release it all as separate discs but in one bundle for the same game price. Um, that's the only thing that I'm kind of scared about. If they release it in episodes like everyone thinks they might, you're going to be paying $60 per part for the game. I hope that isn't the case, but you know at this point we, we just need more information from Square and you know it could be 
could be within days that they tell us more about it. Maybe it was a misunderstanding or, uh, you know, they they kind of just misspoke about it. But there's no real way to know. So I think just getting bent out of shape about it at this point is just kind of foolish. So just stand by, guys, and, you know, Square will get us more information. So anyway, yeah, that was my uh, thoughts and analysis of the uh, of the new game footage for Final Fantasy VII Remake, as well as some of my thoughts about whether or not it is going to be episodic and what that means for you know the consumer so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and if you like this video please like comment subscribe and share for more content from me final infinity and until next time guys take care